Hi, my name is Tim Trinkline. I am a third year graduate student in Rob Sinovec's lab at the University of Washington in Seattle. And today I'll be talking about a new multidimensional GC technique called Total Transfer Modulation Comprehensive Three-Dimensional GC, or Total Transfer GC Cubed for short. Of course, everyone here is familiar with the advantages of GC GC which I think can be distilled down into three distinct categories. Simply put, GCGC -GC provides roughly tenfold higher peak capacity, increased compound class information, and increased detectability, all relative to 1D GC. Our motivations for exploring GC cubed are simply to see if we can further enhance these three key benefits, especially to see if we can further enhance the peak capacity. Instrumentally, GC cubed can be thought of as an extension to an existing GC GC platform, consisting simply of an additional modulator and an additional short separation column. Now, since GC GC peaks on the second dimension are on the order of a few hundred milliseconds, the second modulator in a GC cubed instrument needs to operate at an ultra fast modulation period of roughly 250 milliseconds or less. The resulting data, once it's reshaped, can be viewed in its natural 3D dimensionality as an isosurface chromatogram, for instance, as shown here. Our group first reported a GC cubed instrument with time of flight mass spectrometry detection in 2017. This instrument used a diaphragm valve as the modulator linking the 1D and 2D column separations and a stock Leco quadjet thermal modulator to link the 2D and 3D column separations. This instrument used a DB5 column on 1D, a DB wax column on 2D, and an RTX200 column on 3D. While sufficient for a proof of principle instrument study, there were a few things we wanted to improve and address. For instance, the separation space, i.e. the distribution of components in the three dimensions, could have been further improved. Perhaps more importantly, the diaphragm valve only transferred about 10% of the material from column one onto the subsequent separation dimensions. Therefore, we want to improve the duty cycle by using only total transfer modulators and see if we can evaluate columns that would provide increased usage of the separation space. The instrument design we came up with utilized the thermal modulator instead to link the 1D and 2D comp separations and used a flow modulator to link the 2D and 3D separations. Specifically, we used a total transfer flow modulation technique called dynamic pressure gradient modulation, or DPGM. DPGM operates by using a two-way solenoid valve to apply an auxiliary pressure to a junction which separates the two modulation columns. When that pressure is applied, the flow and alleyweight from the previous dimension is stopped. When that pressure is turned off by switching the valve, some material is allowed to pass the junction, causing an injection on the next dimension. When that pressure is reapplied, the flow from the previous columns is once again stopped while simultaneously providing a flow for the separation of that injected pulse on the tertiary column. Using this new instrument, we want to then evaluate A, what peak capacity we could obtain, and B, what kind of columns would allow us to use the full separation space. We decided to look at two column sets in particular. The first column set was very similar to that in the 2017 study, and column set two was differed principally in the use of an ionic lipid column on the third dimension, that is an SLBIL111, therefore enabling us to use the full range of column polarities that are available with commercial capillary columns. The next few slides will show a few different views of a separation space to highlight both how to work with GC cubed data and to show you which one of these two columns better performed. Now, if we sum up the mass spectral dimension and the 3D separation dimension, we are left with a 1D by 2D total ion current tick chromatogram which is analogous to a GCGC -GC tick chromatogram. Now, just looking at these two separation dimensions, we can see that better distribution of the components, here showing a 100 component test mixture, was achieved using COMSET 2.
Similarly, we can retain the natural 3D dimensionality and view the data as an isoservice chromatogram. In this view, we once again see that better usage of the separation space is obtained with CONCEPT2. However, I think that the isosurface chromatogram can be a bit difficult to understand when looking at just one view. Another way to interpret the data is to take that isosurface chromatogram and rotate it to the various separation views, which can be considered as analogous to summing away one of the dimensions. For instance, in this view, I've summed away the 2D chromatogram showing you the 1D and 3D separation. Alternatively, we can rotate that plot to show you what the 2D by 3D separation looks like, which showcases how those two column stationary faces perform. We can also overlay various, not necessarily sequential modulations off of the first dimension column to get a sample of what that 2D by 3D space looks like. Note that each modulation off of 1D gets modulated several more times by the second modulator and therefore can be kind of thought of as a fast GCGC -GC separation. Here I've looked at 10 different compounds which were excised by taking off column 1 modulations and plotting their resulting fast GCGC -GC separations. Once again, in this view, we see that a better distribution of these compounds was achieved using column set 2 versus using column set 1. Of course, we can look at every single modulation off of 1D, which of course results in a fast GCGC separation, which I call a GCGC cubed flipbook chromatogram. Considering this column set 2 to provide the superior um, usage of separation space, we calculated a peak capacity corrected for column band broadening from undersampling of about 20,000, which is both much higher than our 2017 report and is also much higher than is typically achieved with GCGC -GC alone. Lastly, I want to leave you with a few examples of what I think GC cubes can do for your kinds of samples. On the left, we have a separation of a derivatized porcine serum, which is here greatly enhanced by the additional selectivity of GC cubed. In this instance, I've shown different 3D peaks with different colors to emphasize different mass channels that are being plotted. In other words, a sort of 3D analytical ion current chromatogram. On the right here, I've shown a jet fuel separation, and of course we get a classical group type compound distribution where we have saturated compounds less retained on 2D and monoaromatic and diaromatic compounds more retained on 2D. However, we don't see a real good distinction between the monoaromatic and diaromatic compounds on 2D. Interestingly, when we view the data in its 3D dimensionality, we see that the monoaromatic and diaromatic compounds are well separated along the third dimension, and therefore we get a better class-based separation of this particular sample using the TTGC cubed instrument. In conclusion, I just want to point out the GC cubed can provide peak capacities of 20,000 or more, which outperforms most, if not all, modern GC GC platforms. You might think, well, picking a column to use for each of the three columns may be, you know, a difficult choice to make. However, many interesting combinations are available now, such as using an ionic liquid phase on the third dimension, as shown here. Lastly, GC cubed can provide enhanced compound class information in particular if a better separation of one group of compounds is achieved on that third dimension separation column. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Tim Trinkland, and I also want to mention Paige Sudel, Sonia Schoenike, and Kiva Warren, who helped contribute to the either collecting or presenting of the data shown in this talk. Thank you once again.